Senate. President Calum Coolidge's acceptance speech, January 7, 1914. Honorable Senators, I thank you with gratitude for the high honors given, with appreciation for the solemn obligations assumed. I thank you. The Commonwealth is one. We are all members of one body. The welfare of the weakest and the welfare of the most powerful are inseparably bound together. Industry cannot flourish if they go in. Transportation cannot prosper if manufacturers decline. The general welfare cannot be provided for in any one act, but it is well to remember that the benefit of one is the benefit of all, and the neglect of one is the neglect of all. The suspension of one man's dividends is the suspension of another man's pay envelope. Men do not make laws, they do but discover them. Laws must be justified by something more than the will of the majority. They must rest on the eternal foundation of righteousness. That state is most fortunate in its form of government which has the aptest instruments for the discovery of laws. The latest, most modern, and nearest perfect system that statesmanship has devised is representative government. Its weakness is the weakness of us, imperfect human beings to administer. Its strength is that even such, administration secures to the people more blessings than any other administration secures before. No nation has discarded it and retained liberty. Representative government must be preserved. Courts are established not to determine the popularity of a cause, but to adjudicate and enforce rights. No litigant should be required to seek, to submit his case to the, to the hazard and expense of a political campaign. No judge should be required to seek or receive political rewards. The courts of Massachusetts are known and honored wherever men love justice. Let their glory suffer no diminution at our hands. The electorate and judiciary cannot combine. A hearing means a hearing. When a trial of causes goes outside the courtroom, Anglo-Saxon constitutional government ends. People cannot look to legislation generally for success. Industry, thrift, character cannot be conferred by act or result. Government cannot relieve from toil. It can provide no substitute for the rewards of service. It can, of course, care for the defective and is a recognized distinguished merit. The normal must care for themselves. Self-government means self-support. Man is born into the universe with a personality that is his own. He has a right that is founded upon the constitution of the universe to have property that is his own. Ultimately, property rights and personal rights are the same thing. The one cannot be preserved if the other be violated. Each man is entitled to his rights and the rewards of his service, he may never so large and never so small. History reveals no civilized people among whom there were not a highly educated class and large aggregations of wealth represented usually by the clergy and nobility. Inspiration has always come from above. Diffusion of learning has come down from the university to the common school. The kindergarten is last. No one would now expect to aid the common school by abolishing higher education. It may be that the diffusion of wealth works in an analogous way. As the little red schoolhouse is built in the college, it may be that fostering the protection of large aggregations of wealth are the only foundation upon which to build the prosperity of the whole people. Large profits mean large payrolls, but profits must be the result of service performed. 
you know, land? Are there so many large, so many and such large aggregations of wealth as here? In no land do they perform a larger service. In no land will the work of a day bring so large a reward in material and spiritual welfare. Have faith in Massachusetts. In some unimportant detail, some other states may surpass her, but in the general result, there is no place on earth where the people secure in a large measure the blessings of organized government. And nowhere can those functions be more properly termed self-government. Do the day's work. If it be to protect the rights of the weak, whoever objects do it. If it be to help a powerful corporation better serve the people, whatever the opposition, do that. Expect to be called a stand pattern, but don't be a stand pattern. Expect to be called a demagogue, but don't be a demagogue. Don't hesitate to be as revolutionary as science. Don't hesitate to be as reactionary as the multiplication table. Don't expect to build up the weak by tearing down the strong. Don't hurry to legislate. Give administration a chime the time to catch up with legislation. We need a broader, firmer, deeper faith in the people. A faith that men desire to do right. That the commonwealth is founded upon a righteousness which will endure. A reconstructed faith that the approval of the people is not given to demagogues slavishly pandering to their selfishness, merchandising with the clamor of the hour, but to states ministering to their wealth representing their deep, silent, abiding convictions. Statutes must appear appeal to more than material welfare. Wages don't satisfy you to never so large, nor houses, nor land, nor coupons that they fall for his autumn leaves. Man has a spiritual nature. Touch it, and it responds as the magnet to the pole, to that, not to selfishness, like the laws of the commonwealth appeal. Recognize the immortal worth and dignity of man. Let the laws of Massachusetts proclaim to you a humblest citizen, performing the most menial task, the recognition of his manhood, the recognition that all men are peers, the humblest with the most exalted, the recognition that all work is glorified. Such is the path to equality before the law. Such is the foundation of liberty under the law. Such is the sublime revelation of man's relation to man. Democracy.